abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Uh -huh. The woman's arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, earrings and lipstick and makeup. This is how this woman was dressed. Now, we're ta not talking about a literal woman here, but God describes this woman, as I told you before, in Proverbs 7 and 10. And there the man met a woman dressed in the attire of a harlot. Yes. And my question to you was if the woman was dressed like a prostitute, how do women dress that are not prostitutes? Amen. So here we see how a prostitute literally dresses. So we carried me away in the spirit. In the wilderness I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple, scarlet color, decked with gold, precious stones, pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of sinfulness and filthiness of her fornication. Read. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Now I explained to you that it originated on the plain of Shinar in Babel or Babylon the city, actual proper. Now here we see Mystery Babylon, great mother of harlots. Mother of harlots again means originator of all of this blasphemy, originator of all this sin. Now, this wickedness, I said the first apostate movement that opposed uh, God, spread down through the dispensations of time into what eventually would be the Roman church, that is uh, erroneously called Catholic today. Yes. Catholic is a misnomer. It means worldwide or universal. Yes. It is actually the Roman church. Right. Now, here we see in verse... Uh, six. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Saints are going to fall to this religious movement. Amen. Saints are going to be affected by this religious movement. How many so-called Christmas churches just a few weeks ago celebrated the birth of Tammuz and right. called it the birth of Christ. Amen. How many had the decorated tree? If they didn't have the tree, they had the decoration. Amen. You couldn't. You could, I guarantee you couldn't go in no city in America and you didn't see some kind type of decoration. That's right, prophecy. For Amen. what? Well, for the birth of Christ. But there's no Bible for that. Amen. No Bible for it at all. There's no such thing as a Christmas yeah. in the Bible. Again, that's Roman Catholic. Amen. Now here we see the infusion of an apostate movement from the Babylonian cult into actually the New Testament church through the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. All right, read. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her. Now here he's going to explain and express the mystery of this woman, which literally is a movement, a religious movement. All right, now pick up in verse 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. I, I shared before, Rome sits amid seven mountains or seven hills, the city of Rome. So we're identifying now a particular city, but it's not really speaking of a city as such, but the headquarters of the Roman Empire centered in Rome. Thus, the Pope's headquarters is where? In Rome. Amen. So we see now the connection now as beginning to be infused from the Babylonian cult religion into now the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Let's drop down to verse 15. And he said unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Um, mult uh, people, multitudes, nations, and tongues, which means every ethnic race of people has been affected by the Roman Catholic Church. Amen. Drop down to verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city. Now he breaks this down. The woman that you saw, I told you before, it's not a literal woman, Amen. but it's a religious movement, was a great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now in the dispensation of Christ and the apostles, the greatest empire in that dispensation of time was the Roman Empire. Amen. And it was even so after the death of Christ as we carried through into the first council of Nicaea in 325 where Constantine took control over Christianity and Constantine literally was the first pope. I have uh, some Amen. material 
uh, uh, at home where it says, uh, I forget the name, some other name that they say was the first pope, but uh, this was in like 400 uh, A.D., but literally speaking, Constantine was the first pope. Now, I'll tell you why I say this. Right. Constantine took control over Christianity at Nicaea in 325 by force of his army. He was the emperor of the Roman Empire, claiming to have a vision from God, but literally he served uh, the goddess Diana, yes. who's the Roman replica of the goddess Ishtar, who was the Babylonian uh, goddess. So, again, you, you, you see, again, the integrating of Babylonian religion into the Roman Catholic Church. And the Roman Catholic Church at that time controlled, after Nicaea 325, controlled the Christian movement. So they in, 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 ingested into Christianity the so-called Trinity, Amen. which means three gods. Yes. I don't care how they twist it and turn it. Trinity is taking on the word tri, which means three. Amen. Amen. Three persons, individuals in heaven. Now they claim, because they can't get out of the scripture, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism, they say, yeah, but there's, we believe in one God, but in three persons. If you've got three persons, then you've got three separate gods. Amen. 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 Double talk all you want. You, you can't double talk all of us. Right. And when you've got three gods, you've got two gods too many. Somewhere. Praise Amen. God. All right, so here... Again, we see the apostate movement coming from Babylon now into the Christian church. Amen. And this is why the dominant uh, Christian uh, theology today is the so-called Trinity. And every church that's not Trinitarian, they call us a cult. Yeah. Well, there's something wrong with you. You, you. you believe in Jesus only. Yeah, we believe in Jesus only. Amen. And the Bible believes in Jesus only. Amen. Praise God. Jesus said... Amen. Moses wrote of me. Amen. Moses way back in the Old Testament. If Moses wrote of Jesus back in the Old Testament referring to Jehovah God, then Jesus must be Jehovah God. Since the prophets wrote of him, praise Lord. Isaiah 45 and 5, I am the Lord. There is none else. There's no God beside me. Now that's what Jehovah spoke through the prophet Isaiah. So again, we have to fully understand that when we say we are Jesus only, we are speaking the truth. Amen. And when they speak about a trinity, they're speaking something that they can't back up with no scripture. Amen. Someone emailed me the other day and said, Jesus believed in the trinity. Well, I, I want you to email me back where Jesus believed in the trinity. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I know good and well he couldn't have believed in no trinity because right, he told the apostles, when you see me, you see the Woo! Father. Yeah. And I know there were one Father, Malachi, I believe that word 2 and 10 clears that up. Yeah. Yeah. Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us. Yes. Created us. Yes. And the Bible said, New Testament, Jesus created everything that was created, was created by Him. Yes. Everything that was made was made by Him. Yes. Jesus. Yes. He was in the world, and the world was made by Him. Yes. He came into His own, and His own received Him not. Yes. But as many as would receive Him, to them He gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on His name. Yes. And His name is Jesus. Yes. The importance fully understanding the error of this powerful Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. Brothers and sisters, listen, it's the richest organization in the world. Oh, yeah. And they can change governments. That's yeah. right. Not as strong as they used to be, but at one time they could overthrow oh, yeah. governments. That's right. yeah. But they can't overthrow the Church of God. Oh, yeah. Because the words went forward. Yeah. The gates of hell shall not prevail That's right. against yeah. my church. Oh, yeah. So uh, we have to fully understand. The importance of understanding the Babylonian influence as it came into Christianity and connected with Revelation again, uh, 17, 18, and the woman. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Uh, 18 and 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Uh -huh. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. How many nations? All. A few. All. Some. All. All nations. Yes. Every group of people on this earth has been affected some kind of way Amen. by the Roman Catholic Church. Read. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, 
and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of